perspective and, and uh, taking advantage of your experience as a former board member. Appreciate that. Uh, 1.2, any agenda revisions uh, or board comments? I'll just um, note that maybe we should think about, I don't know what you and what the board's pleasure is, but doing uh, board goals without Vera or Eric, um, we could choose to simply adopt the goals as the supervisory union board and the executive committee have recommended, but previous discussions were around doing something more specific to Berlin. Um, so we could either do that tonight or uh, table for a, a future date when perhaps Vera and, and Eric will be participating. That's our on our agenda for under 3.1. When is the next scheduled meeting? The next scheduled meeting would be August, I believe. So August 13th. Is that our own meeting? That is our own meeting at BDS, yes. The future meetings are listed on the agenda under 1.4, the next two meetings anyway. Oh, I see that, yeah. Yep. yep. Any, any thoughts on that, or we can um, discuss when we get to board goals? Well, I kind of like the idea of tabling it as far as getting Vera's and uh, Eric's input. I kind of toyed for a moment in my mind, well, could we could we vote in acceptance of these with right. potentially like adding on, but I don't know if that's really the cleanest way to, no, we could do, that. to do it. Yeah. And Pete, you're I, just I, walking I think, right into this, so. Yeah, I think it would be good to delay it. I'm certainly not in a position to, to vote knowledgeably about it one okay. way or another. And those two folks also. had input and would be good to hear from them. Yes. Then I, I, I would suggest that we table 3.1 board goals for our next meeting in August and be prepared to look at the SU goals that were adopted tonight um, and think about whether or not we want to add any additional specific Berlin goals to that. Yep. So we'll, uh, 3.1 will be tabled. Any other agenda revisions? Any public comments or correspondence anyone wants to mention? Okay, we'll note the future meetings. Um, knowing that we'll probably have a special meeting this month to just to discuss Act 46 at the um, SU board level. Two point of the consent agenda, um, approving the minutes of May fourteenth. Those are on page two of your packet. Yeah, on page four, Peter's last name needs to be corrected. All right. Schober is S C H O B E R. Here's, and that's it. It ends with R. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other? Revisions to the minutes, comments? Um, and I'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes with the one um, correction that Corinne noted. So moved. Is there a second? Yes, that's me. That's you. I'll take your word for it. All right, since you weren't there for that, that's that's fine. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, no. The ayes have it, and we've approved the minutes. Under the discussion agenda, we have 3.1 board goals, and as we just stated, we'll be um, tabling those to the next meeting. Hopefully Vera and Eric will, would be able to be there for that. Um, do we want to have any sort of a discussion at all about what you heard just now tonight as far as board goals while it's fresh in your minds uh, to capture in the minutes? Um. P. 
Peter, you, you don't have the history, of course, but um, when I first joined the board, and I guess that's been, I can't remember if it's been three or four years now, one of the first things we did with, uh, and there were four of us that were new to the board all at once. Mm -hmm. So four out of five were brand new members. Um, first thing we did was try to lay out some, some board goals, and you'll see those in previous um, packets. Actually, is it in this packet? I don't think it is. Previous agenda packets. Um, where we tried to give some guidance to the administration about what we wanted to see happening in Berlin. And uh, we didn't, didn't didn't make many changes to those for, for probably the whole time you were there, Carol, as I have been here as principal, and they really needed to be updated. Um, and as we went about trying, starting to update those, um, that's when the executive committee started looking at it supervisory union-wide board goals and urged us to hold off and as part of our response to Act 46 and everything else trying to align the schools and get all the schools to work together, all the districts to work together. It's um, important to revisit those at least annually. Very important to revisit those. We didn't didn't do that or we would look at them and say, yeah, still close enough. We're still doing these things. A lot of things did change and did happen based on those goals and Carol um, did a lot of nice work um, based on those goals and met some of those goals and so they really do need to be to be updated so as we went about it again that's when uh, they asked us to hold off while the executive committee and the supervisory union board um, came up with some common goals they wanted us to consider so that's where we are now and uh, so we have those three major goals that i think encompass most of everything not with the same level of detail, but encompass, I think, the goals that we had set out. And there may be a few specific ones that don't quite fit. So that's where we left, left it off was with um, looking at the, the district-wide goals and um, thinking about whether or not there are any Berlin-specific goals that we wanted to maybe add to that. Mm -hmm. So I was, you know, personally, I was fairly pleased with what we saw tonight um, and think those are really good, three really great areas to focus on and encompass a lot of what we were trying to get done through our our own board goals. But I don't know, I'd like to hear how I think everybody it's else feels about it. Looking back at the ones that he's referring to, mm -hmm. um, some of them weren't really measurable at all. And um, that was a conversation that we had gotten into. Yeah. And that was, that was one thing we had been talking about was just trying to shrink the number of them too because it was a lot to make it workable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, these work what what Vera and I had both been saying at the last meeting was that there were some kind of specific Berlin items, which not to say that they aren't specific at other schools, but that we felt were important for Berlin. Yeah. So if if neither or either um, Beer or Eric wouldn't be able to make the next meeting, it would be great if we could ask them to put any thoughts down At so least we don't have to comments. delay it any, any more than that. Okay. So let's um, plan on making a final decision in August. Carol, is there anything you'd like to add as far as how helpful those goals have been to you or not helpful and what you – what you would, um, in your opinion, what we could add or what we should take away beyond the, the three broad goals? Yeah, I think Corinne hit it. You know, we want, uh, it would be great to submit goals that are measurable, that the data could be presented on. Like we were, t what we were trying to do with the CIP when we were putting uh, information last year to the board where we showed the CIP and we could indicate how we were moving towards that goal. Mm -hmm. um, having something that's measurable, that data can be collected on, um, yeah. the evidence can be shown. Mm -hmm. And then Aaron, when he comes in, if you present them as, you all presented that you wanted certain things specifically done when you interviewed me so long ago. And I knew that those were those focus. And you know what we added into the CIP, and you adopted that. Yeah. And I used the CIP more at that time. Um, but 
it would be great then to ask Aaron if he could report out you know, I know they're board goals, but what's happening to move those forward or report out occasionally what you could contribute to help those goals move yeah. even further along. Okay. But Corinne hit it exactly. They really should be measurable. Right. Thank you. All right, so if there's no further discussion on 3.1, we can move to 3.2. And I'll say that I did some work on this today. I'm going to hand out something that's a little more detailed than what's in the packet. Okay. Um, copy this. this the capital plan updated with a few more price tags. No, that's fine. So this was something, again, for the historical benefit here. When we went through the renovation process, there were a number of things uh, that we uncovered either later in the process and were part of the project or um, were specifically cut out of the project because we didn't have the budget for it. But our, our goal in this respect was to make sure that we kept tabs on everything in the building um, that needs work or would need work eventually and start planning for it and uh, set aside money in a capital fund and keep up with the maintenance so we wouldn't be in this position again um, 20 years from now or and who knows maybe even sooner than that saying oh we need another bond we'd rather keep up with it rather than go out for a bond ever again so um, this is that's the thought behind all this so we started putting uh, putting together this list of what's uh, what the current needs are and the price tag that goes along with that the roof is actually going to start in a, in a couple of weeks. We were lucky enough uh, to have um, some space in the bond to, to go after the roof when we initially had cut it out of the project. Um, the driveway is another big ticket item. And these are, these are very rough guesses, I'll say, on, on some of these prices. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, some of, the, some of them came from uh, contractors and some of them came from Somewhere along the way in the project, a number was was thrown out there as a just to give us an idea of what the what these things cost. Um, so the roofing is underway. The paving the drive would be a big project and is a priority in a number of people's minds. I think, uh, given some of the holes we have there, uh, I'll say that the sinkhole, which was a I think it was an old septic system that was out on the playground, that's that's been done. Um, so you can scratch that one. Uh, some other things that were identified in the renovation process were some masonry issues um, outside, just the, the masonry between the bricks and some of the areas of the school has worn away some. Um, painting and sealing the exterior metal louvers at the unit ventilators. Reviewing the cracked brick veneer at the southeast corner of the kitchen. It was something that, that came up and that's, that's to review it and that's not to fix it at this point. Uh, the storage shed uh, has some issues, and uh, that was a number that was thrown out there on that. Um, we created uh, ADA compliant access uh, at the front entrance, but um, did not do that for the back entrances off to the playground. And again, that was a conscious decision of trying to keep our renovation bond under $3 million. There were certain items that, that came back off the list. Upgrading the exterior soffit lights, uh, painting the front gate, the shades for interior miscellaneous areas. Carol, was that? That, is done. that was done. Okay. Done. okay, good. And a smart board for the conference room. Then we found money in the budget for that. Kindergarten cubbies have been ordered, or are yes. they done? They're that ordered. Is done. Oh, it's done. All it's right. Done. It's been ordered. We're putting them in. We're going to put them in this summer. Oh, excellent. So no further monies. Needed. Correct. Correct. And what does that mean? Does that mean it's been taken out of a line item in the budget or it means, the project? Um, what happened was that we had put aside uh, some funding for um, some furniture for the library, which was not used, not needed in, in, to the extent. And so we did, uh, we, we looked at and said what would be the best way to allocate these funds, and the cubbies were. Um, 
we get to the painting item on the list here. Um, Is that also true of the sinkhole repair? That was through the bond. That was part of the bond money, yeah. yeah it just hadn't been done yet. Mm -hmm. Because we didn't use a contractor, we just, or we didn't use, go through our general contractor. We just um, did it out ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, getting our cubbies. Accessible restroom was part of the project that was a Kind of a nice to have or a want to have, but not necessarily a need to have. Just adding a, off the library up in that corner of the building to add a, an accessible restroom. Which, when we were first talking about it, one of my issues was we're losing space in doing it. Yeah. Like we were talking about a classroom, and it's how do you right. how do you decide whose class is going to go into the smaller classroom? Yep. Yeah. So that was just one of the things on the list that doesn't necessarily have to go back on the list. Uh, cleaning out the boiler room and chip debris and removing the wood chip boiler. So there's that inoperable wood chip boiler that's still there uh, underground over in the corner off the gym. So all that equipment is still there? I believe it's all Some still in there and there's, yeah, and all that stuff is in there and the uh, Architect said probably something we should take care of at some point. Do we have to take care of it right now? Probably not. Who's with the handicap bathroom? Right, <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, there will also be some salvage from that. Yeah, that oh, that's like a lot for that. That's true too. Um, the kitchen work. So as we got through the, the project, I think we had an inspection, and there were a number of potential code violations noted. And so we've kind of have this hanging over our heads that at any time we could have a code violation in the kitchen, which would be a real a real issue. And uh, But at the moment we don't. But at the and moment we don't. There is nothing that imminently needs to be done, okay. if I recall from our last meeting. I think that's I think that's said. right, um, Corinne, although uh, the grease trap is something that keeps yeah, the grease trap keeps is coming up. Concern. It was taken out. Yeah. And not replaced. Sometime in the past? It was taken out during the construction. Oh, as part of the project. So I don't have a dollar figure to give you on that, but um, uh, Jesse Remick, who was part of the Black River Design Architects who worked on this, kind of shot me an email late in the day today. His recollection was that the kitchen items were to remove the redundant water conditioner in the kitchen, which would also solve our lack of an air gap issue. Uh, do the outdoor grease trap work? It's less straightforward as there are some questions regarding the ruling about whether this is a code violation or not. And also remove the interior grease trap that the um, washing machine is drained to as this is not by code supposed to be drained through a grease trap based on hot temperatures and detergents. So there are three what or four. What was the redundant thing? I kind of missed that. That was remove the redundant water conditioner in the kitchen, which I believe solves the lack of an air gap issue. We had purchased a water, before we went over to the water with Berlin, it was right. very, very hard water, so we had to have a water conditioner, and I think they just left it in there. So. Now that Berlin has a water source and there is water conditioning being mm -hmm. happening. Hmm. Okay. And, but it was something to do with the, that they were afraid that the, there would be a calcium buildup in the uh, dishwasher, which mm -hmm. would cause a major right. problem. So we had to, at that time, purchase something to condition that water so we wouldn't lose our um, dishwasher. So yeah, is it redundant because there's a new one and an old one, or redundant because you don't need it with the new water system? I, I believe that what they're saying is when they did some revamp of the kitchen that it's taken care of now, and it, that there is that water coming in from Berlin, it doesn't need to happen. Uh, it isn't necessary. Yep. So no treatment is necessary now with the new water? That's my understanding. I can clarify that further, 
So that gives you a general sense of, of the, the things going on in the kitchen, and I think the painting, in the kitchen. painting is, is, is also, an, yeah. Chris, the person that got back to you as far as the redundant and the two piece yeah. tracks, was there any dollar figure with that? They did all? not give us any dollar okay. figures with that piece of it, so that's okay. still Just to be done to there. understand okay. what that what that cost is. Where and is the extensive commentary. Well, I, I I think one of the architects said it would be expensive. So extensive and expensive. Uh, extensive was there were a lot of lot of items in there to be taken care of, and then I got further clarification. Doesn't sound like as many items as I thought. And then as far as expense, I really don't know. So no no real good information to give you there, but um, I think gives us a good indication of the priority if there's a possible code violation there. When uh, the original construction was going on, I don't know, Chris, if you remember, every time we went to a meeting, that grease trap was a discussion. Yeah. And it was hard to remove. It was in an area that was causing major problems because of the plumbing. And yeah, there's some things that are buried under the cement and they're, it, they're, yeah. Yeah, and they didn't even feel we needed it. It was yep. not necessary. So. Well, from the sounds of what was it, Jesse, Jesse. said, yep. that there were actually there's actually two different grease traps yes. that we're talking about. It isn't just one. One in here, one next year. That's what yeah. it sounded like. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So who, who several is the, issues. Um, mechanical designer on the project, you know. You um, know? I want to say is Kohler and Lewis. Uh, yeah, I'm sure Black River would use. Yeah. yeah. And I'm trying to remember, I think it was, there were so many bills on the project, I think it was one of the bills. And, um, I go back to the uh, exterior H. We had a, a child yeah. who uh, had an injury and was in a wheelchair. And we found that not having some kind of ramp out of that back entrance when we had oh. a drill, it was a drill that was not planned because it was something that Chuck was doing in an area and mm -hmm. set it off. It was extremely hard for oh. the teacher to get the child out with the wheelchair. Very Be hard. Because of the lack of a, of a grade going a out? Grade and the, the fish over a hump and, and then the lack of grade. Yep. It, was, it was very hard. Good, uh, good to know. You know, because they had to kind of lift it and drop it down to yep. find someone to help with that. All right. It was not easy. So okay. just be aware that we kind of. And those are two actual. Two exit two, entrances. One on, one on either side. There's one on either yeah. side, at least getting one done. But, right. but you really need both because you don't know where somebody exactly. would be coming from. It would seem any ADA thing on here needs to be bumped up as far as priorities just because you never know how many things could, could be. I mean, a student, a teacher, anybody at any moment could end up in a wheelchair or, or, we or crutches or anything. Or we could have the school in, who is yeah. wheelchair bound. So, right. But it was very glaring to me when the teacher came and said, oh my gosh, that was really awful. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for that feedback. Mm -hmm. So two of those under H if, uh, yeah. if we go there. So we talked about the code items in the kitchen work, the painting. If you've been in, into the kitchen, you, you know that it could use a, yeah. a good fresh coat of paint. And we've got a quote of roughly $2,500 for, for that. Um, there was there has been discussion in past meetings where, where Chuck has said, I want to go ahead and do this. Can I just do this? And uh, I think you and, and Bill have both said, let's prioritize Chuck's work elsewhere and Let's hire this out if there's any way possible to do the the painting in the building. Because of the because of the prep work, it's it labor intensive. It's very labor intensive. It's not like just throwing a. Well, yeah. The whole idea is to to make sure that whatever is taken off, so whatever's put up sticks. Right. So we don't have that peeling. Yeah. Remember that peeling? Oh, some, yeah. some pretty bad peeling. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And that leads us to the other painting, and, and Carol was uh, nice enough to put this together today on short notice. Thank you, Carol. No um, the painting needs for the building. And so I was trying to rough some of this out myself, and then um, Carol provided the detail. But uh, we did the painting we did in the classrooms was one accent wall, so there were three walls in any given classroom, right, that did not get painted? They did not get painted on... Um 
and the problem is that we put in new sinks. We took down, right. uh, you know, um, shelving. We took off um, containers that had, you know, paper towel dispensers and things like that, and they filled the holes, and that was it. Yeah. And, and behind some of those things are the original paint, and then you've got other layers of paint. Yeah. And then you've got these holes and dirty kind of stuff. So that, is that just in the two classrooms that are listed here? No, they're so in the every classroom. I put basically every classroom needs some painting. The only areas that are fine, I've listed there. The ones that need the painting the most are rooms that have four colors in it, three or four colors in the room. Mm -hmm. It's very distracting. I think uh, Jane Couchet has four different walls with four different colors, and um, Meg has um, some color distraction in her room because she's got three or four different colors. Yep. And there are some that are peeling worse than others. Yeah, but, yeah. I didn't notice you put it down the floor of the walk-in cooler also yes. has some, okay. That is that something that they got the point yep. So we were quoted. We were quoted a rough um, fifteen hundred dollars per classroom, and that involves a very in labor-intensive scraping to make sure that um, it adheres properly. And so I put down. Are there fifteen classrooms? Is that about right? Something like that. Yeah. Around the outside, and and then there are a few on the in the conference room. The um, some of the areas in the inside uh, center of the building. There are a few. Um, and then the little bathrooms in each classroom. We got a quote of three hundred dollars each to do those, and there are about a dozen of those. And then you had provided more detail, um, Carol. So I guess my question would be: Is there actually? I should know the answer, but I don't. Is there actually money in the budget to be? doing not all the painting, but to do whatever it might be. There's like five rooms here, plus some doors to, to do some kind of chunk of it. So I don't know, you know, maybe it's the next couple of summers Save that some is done, or are we looking at needing to take money from the capital budget or whatever for, for something right. like painting. I and mean, it's a different question as far as something like paving. Right. But painting, I don't see as being, unless we want to take it all on, I don't see it as being extravagant to right. paint some rooms. Some other time. I, I could add, I'd like to add to that question, and maybe, Laurie, you can clarify, mm -hmm. um, because tonight you said that all schools have a surplus. Mm -hmm. But some schools, including Berlin, have surplus because they've allocated remaining funds from the construction project? Do you want me to do the financial round so you can kind of answer all your questions at once? Because there's a lot of different pieces. We have a lot of different funds. Yeah. We have a capital fund and we have a general fund. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you mind if we jump to that? Can I just go through these last four in the mechanical and then, sure. then we'll go to that? That sounds good. So under mechanical, and there it is, Kohler and Lewis was the, mm -hmm. the firm. I see the, the note there. Uh, just a couple of s small things and one big thing. Um, cleaning the transfer grill in the kitchen, installing a pressure tank, and there was a loose sink in one of the bathrooms. And then- uh, Pressure the, tank, where would that be? Is that, is that kitchen related? I guess is my question. I, or is that building I related? I think it's for the building, okay. if I remember correctly. And we removed what was there, and then they recommended we put something back. But what we had removed was something that was older. Okay. Um, and then installing an alternate heating source was another thing that we considered at one time, just to, mm -hmm. who knows if oil prices went sky high, then it might make some sense. So that's the list. Um, our thought was to prioritize this and see if there are a few things we can pick off uh, a bit at a time, and then maybe some big items we want to prioritize saving for. Um, but. Maybe this would be a good time for Lori yeah. to do the financial report. So, all right, we can talk about all the different funds. And Peter reminded me he was on the U32 budget. 
accordingly approved the U32 project. So he's got a uh -huh. construction experience. Oh, excellent. <laughs> I think he also did a lot of different projects at the Roman School back in the day. Mm -hmm. So I was going to jump to page 19 on okay. the full board packet, which is your financial report for this school. Yep. Um, Carol has been working diligently closing down um, as she's leaving, so she has identified some savings that will help bring up the fund balance. So what typically happens is we don't close the books today. I mean, this is the early part of June. We close the books after the end of June. So we've given it our best shot for your school. Um, you had asked also how much savings have we had this year in utilities, plowing, right. everything. So where you'll see um, the revenues haven't changed since last month. And Peter, if you need a quick tutorial at another time, I'm happy to, to do so. Um, the revenues are currently 65000 above the budget. So that, that's pretty good projection. I don't see a lot of swing there. Um, when you go down to the expenses, you'll see we put in under June 2018 in the middle column. Those are the changes since last month. So we have all of the bills in, in, in except for the final like electric bill. And we're projecting to save almost $34,000 in the plowing. Hmm. Electricity, everything, fuel, oil, et cetera. So we've had a very good year. Great. Carol had mentioned she paid for some of those costs out of her line item budget for equipment, um, but she has left 12800 that will carry into this fund balance for next year. So you could consider that for this list if you decide to transfer money to the capital fund or, or okay. use fund balance next year to pay for this, some of these things. Um, when we closed down all the instructional programs, your school saved about 7700 I think you heard me talk about the bus CD that came in, and it's an expense because it passes through the supervisory union now as an assessment. Yeah. So we reduced your assessment for busing um, by $5,400, and that's cash in the bank. So again, that's a solid number. So when you draw a line there, that total is around $57,000, dollars $58,000 of savings. So that's what we came up with. Hmm. The next line is technology, and what we have is a multi-year plan for technology equipment now. So we budget for a level and amount, and then some years we're not going to spend it all, so we save it, have the board reserve it, it's on the action item tonight, mm -hmm. and then um, there'll be a year when all the servers and things need to be done, so it's coming. <laughs> um, but this is why you would not consider that for purposes other than technology, because it has its own multi-year plan capital just for technology. Yeah. So when you look at the end of the day, I mean, it looks like you're 104,000 over the 4% recommendation, down at the, in the keep going. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that would be after you reserve the equipment for technology. Um, and just in case you forgot, last year you reserved 6,400 for technology. So the total is 22,000 for technology which is a few steps up. Do you mm -hmm. see that? 22,770? Yep. Yep. So uh, sorry, I'm not following. Where is that? Uh, oh, right page. There's, there's two reservations for um, the fund oh, balance. One yep. of them is this health yep. care recapture that you already voted on um, back in September. Mm -hmm. You voted to use 9,700 for next year's budget instead of asking the voters to come up with that. Okay. Um, of the 22,000, I've assumed that you are going to move the 16,000 from this year. That's in that total. And you had 6,400 from last year already reserved. Okay. So the grand total would be 22,000. It's a combination of the two years savings. So long story short, you'd have 104,000 here um, is our best guess today when we close the books. Uh, Bill was saying it would be kind of um, premature to move any more money to capital tonight. Yep. Um, when the books are finally closed. What if it's a little bit more? You might want to move more to the capital fund. Mm -hmm. So that's 100000 that you could transfer is our best guess um, for the capital fund in the fall for this list. And then if you turn the page, you'll see the real capital fund. Um, it started the year with 16000 This board did move in um, a total of 85000 
twenty thousand of it was in the budget, and the other sixty-five was the transfer from last year's carryover fund balance that you guys did. Um, and you transferred that. Let's see what day. You transferred it in February. So right now your capital fund has ninety-seven thousand. So if you look at the two together, you have close to two hundred thousand dollars, if that's what the board ends up doing, which is great news. And so um, I don't. And then, I want to just wrap it yeah. up with the capital okay. with the yeah. construction project. So the water project is only on here because the state had a forgiveness this year for your loan. So that doesn't. That's not a carryover. That just shows you your final loan amount of fifty-six thousand because mm -hmm. the state um, wrote off thirty-three thousand. Okay. But the actual construction project, um, you'll see a change order estimate in balance available. We believe between five and thirty thousand should be left from the bond, and from the the proceeds from the um, revenue generated by the bond. Yeah. So it does become available for future capital projects. Good. So if you total it all up, I said, okay, you have ninety-seven thousand in capital. Mm -hmm. Sorry if I'm ignoring you, Bill. Um, no, we're I asked you to do this. <laughs> we're projecting the, the construction project between five and thirty thousand. Um, we have a, this potential in September for the fund balance transfer of a hundred, and then you have in next year's budget another twenty. So you've got like two twenty-five or more. Yeah, is what we believe you'll end up with um, when all the dust settles. Okay. Did that answer all the questions you guys had? Before. Not well before yes, but <laughs> but so. And then wait, but the last one you said, and I wrote it down real quick. Okay. Just don't want to forget it. Was um, did you have money in the school budget? Right. And I think from looking at what happens um, when you have a new construction project, is there's not a lot of repairs that get done because you guys just repaired it, right? Right. So based on what we've been doing this year, there may be about six thousand bucks that you could use for the payment. Because that, that's my basic question is if we want to say let's do X number of rooms or however we want to look at it as far as the painting, this summer is, it, is there money like the $6,000 that can be used? Does it really need to come out of the capital money and therefore could something actually happen this summer? You know, are we waiting to see how much there is to plan it all out? So okay. this summer, um, Berlin Elementary School is in quite a bit of use. Yep. So doing any work outside, oh, except for the roof, is not really doable. Um, we would have to look at it. Not that you couldn't get the work done that you wanted to be done. I just want you to know, I don't want there to be any expectations that the, build, the building's in use almost every week. Yep. Well, all, all the classrooms? All, everything. The specific ones that I was wondering about are the rooms where it says they're in most need of painting. I, I you know, understand like, that we were, we're holding the the extended school year program there. I really so that there's and I just met with all the custodians and we're moving custodians around as we did for East Montpelier yeah. for when they hosted the past two years to um, to move custodians there for the two and a half weeks when there aren't kids in the building to get the building ready for the next school. Year. Yeah. Other schools. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because yeah. because we we, have, we did this with East Montpelier and now East Montpelier they're doing some. They're doing some painting. They're doing some other things that, you know, we just can't keep the extended school year in one building continuously. We need to move it around. And so yeah. that's. Okay. I had read about that. I wasn't thinking, I mean. So it's not that it can't be done, Corinne. I just want yeah. you to understand that there's just timing. Don't, don't hear me as I'm, I think the pain, I'm all in favor of painting and getting yeah. some of those rooms up to place. Right. To right. And I had read about, um, what's happening at, at school this summer, and that was one of the reasons why I was thinking not only cost-wise, but just how many rooms are, can you have the time to, to do anything with. Well, right so. now, and I would say this, that to paint the rooms in, East, in Berlin because of the scraping, we have to contract it out. Right, oh yeah, yeah. we had already we, been we did discussing that. that. Yeah. Sorry, so yeah. um, right now I can tell you, because we, we actually just rejected a bid for Romney because we're not getting good bids because people are booked for the summer. For the summer. We're getting already higher bids than what it actually costs. Okay. Mm. We're so getting premium percent. cost to do anything. Right? For the summer. Yeah, because people are already booked. Yep. The, all the construction trades are booked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I feel forward just say to us, we, and, and Roy Swain, who worked for Berlin, he's a, a boiler person to help with the boilers at Berlin. We're trying to do the same thing at Romney right now because it didn't get done in their construction. Yeah. And he's like, you got premium bids because you went out to bid in yeah. May. Is okay. that something where maybe during one of the school breaks? 
We'd have to look you know, at it. You know, when it's off season, that I, it, I, it I might want to talk to Chuck because the, it's not the painting, it's the taking the room apart and putting it back together for a teacher. Mm -hmm. That's 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 the issue. It's not the getting the painting done. Right. Well, I mean, it's a trade off between that and having to wait another whole year. So. Yeah. Yeah. So for I, I think we can figure that out. Forgive me for not being in the loop here, but the extended school year program has were committed in Berlin for yep. this year, and it's been done before in East Montpelier for two years before that. It was in this building for, two years. Uh, for three or four years in this building. We talked about it being. We need to be in. There are three. There's basically three schools, one size wise, and two we transport the students from the other towns, so we try to bring them to the central location. So we have East Montpelier, Youth Year Two. Really, are three schools. Okay. It seems well, like it's about 90 to 100 kids. Typically, you know, with standard school custodial staff, they have all they can do to do what needs to be done during the course of a standard summer. Yeah, that's um, the, yeah. And I think East Montpelier is probably comparable to Berlin facility wise. Yeah. Um, so you know that it can be done with sharing help yeah. in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah. But and, some of, and some of that is we know the the wing, the primary wing, and like we're going to close that off to a student school year. But Chuck is, you know, he's planning on like I'm going to be getting those rooms ready so during the weeks the kids are there because they're not going to be down there. But those other, the rest of two thirds of the building from basically that the cutoff right there by the that goes up the three four classroom that parallel that goes up paralleling the library mm -hmm. that whole section including the gym, they're all going to be in use. Okay. That, and that may change some. I, I, I want to say that's somewhat fluid. That's the best information I have today. I would love to be able to get a few of those done over the summer, if that's in any way possible. But you're saying summer is... I, I'm saying, I'm telling you right now, you, I'm going to say I'm going to push the custodial staff and to get a bid and to go out, we're not. We're, we're gonna not going to get good prices right now. We're going to pay the premium price gotcha. for getting a painting crew in. To, yeah. And it's the scraping. It's not the painting. Mm -hmm. Literally, mm -hmm. it's hand scraping those mm -hmm. walls because poor paint was put on prior. Yeah. And won't bond. And so, do we have any projection as far as if the summer program would be at Berlin um, next summer? So, in other words, if a vacation time wasn't a viable time is next summer well i think talking about this time? is talking about this now the answer is yes it, i we it could be a viable time we need to talk about everything we're balancing out because what we're balancing out is building taking care of the buildings across the su we have become you know we're we've got things going on every month almost every week of the year all right but this stuff is just as important too so somehow so we do need to make it work. Failure for two consecutive years. Yep. Is it likely that you would want to do a second year in Berlin? Peter, I, I haven't, I haven't given any thought either way. And and that's where I'm saying I want to balance everything that needs to get done, and and yeah. take a look at that. I'm yeah. just, I'm, I'm not going to commit right now because I don't know what I don't know that far. Yeah. We haven't gone that. Okay. Done that so if we prioritize our list and we put. At least some painting at the yeah. at the top of that list. You'll figure out how yeah, to make we'll it. We'll try to figure out how happen. to make it work. We usually we're usually pretty good at doing that. So I'm I'm not trying to I'm don't hear this as a no. It's just I don't know sitting here tonight. Yeah. Chris, was there anything else that rose up to the top of the list? I know we said about the ADA at the right. entrances, I think but that should be pretty high. Yeah. <laughs> So the, it, in the kitchen code violations. That, the kitchen could be. That some of this painting of, of multicolored rooms could be done in the, in the spring break. What, the longest vacation is a week, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a February I, I would think town meeting time. A, a subcontractor yeah. would walk they may. a week. They may. Sometimes they may say, yeah, we can do that. And, we can, and what we usually do with our subs, because of the amount of, or the lack of, personnel power that we have is, you know, help us move stuff. You know, help us move stuff to the center of the rooms. Because what it is today is, you know, you, there, you know that one, yeah. that thing's mounted. You know, we have to mount all by by all the safety standards. We've got to mount anything mm -hmm. that's over three feet or four feet. Not positive. Yeah, I don't remember either. <laughs> that's what we have the facility guys we have. My brain. They know, but they have to secure it to the wall. <laughs> It can be a lot of work to get all that yeah, stuff off. Yeah, so you got to get it all off. Yeah. More work than it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. 
it's not doing it's not doing my house. Which okay. But it looks like there's three classrooms that they were prioritizing. Yeah, I, and I think those are good. I would agree with those Actually, three two classrooms and a conference, and the conference yeah. room. And, and it seems like the conference room or um, Mick Dawkins' small room, those are easier than a classroom because there's just less stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Jay Pochet's room is slated to be used during the summer program. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that and I believe is the kitchen going to be. Because well, the kitchen. I mean, that's what you were bringing. You were bringing that up. Yes, the kitchen will be used. But Chris, you were bringing that up about, and that's what we heard in the construction project. Is the kitchen could be one that we could be in. We need some repairs. And I think that's a conversation. Okay, sir, I need to read. I don't know. So you've summer. talked to John recently. A little bit, and Jesse sent me a little more information Good. today. All right. Repairs and painting. Mm -hmm. And painting. Yeah, and it's they both. Ought to be right. done together. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But I don't think we don't need an answer tonight either. No, not on. I don't. I don't think so. Sounds but like we want to plan for it. Logistics are for limited painting. Uh, if some of the priority painting could be done during the school year. Mm -hmm. And something like the entrance work, even if the school is being used, would not having one of those entrances usable be okay with what was going on? I don't think so. Fire code. Yeah, I think fire code, we'd lose it. We wouldn't be able to have the occupancy. The occupancy in our buildings required for the mm -hmm. doors we have. Yeah. What charge is that, Corinne? Are you talking about the masonry? ADA like access. H. H. Yep. One H. Handicap accessibility. Oh, the providing those, yeah. Right. I mean, uh, I would check and no, I would ask. that would include if, any yeah. egress. Yeah, I have to. Ask, I mean, I have to ask. Well, I was thinking even if one was done this year and yeah. one next year or something. I mean, you know, somehow it needs to. Consecutively, do one at a time. But. Yeah. So this is what I would say would help, and Chris, tell me if this would help you too. I'd like to know the batting order. Mm -hmm. We can work on the details and when to do it and how to get it done, and come back to you with a proposal about this is what we think yep. we can do. Yep. But if I if I know from the board, like, what are your priorities on this list? That helps get into the planning mode and solving that. Yeah. Before we set the batting order, do you want to have any input on any of these that, that you feel are a, are a priority and also how we potentially spend the capital fund, um, knowing we have some very big ticket items and a bunch of small ticket items? Here's what I need to know because we've talked about it so much. Um, is What's the level of that driveway? Because that's a big ticket item there, but I've heard a lot of talk about that being important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if it were like, hey, we got to get the driveway done, then fill stuff in around that, and you give a prior list, we can do that. But if it's like, we want it in the sinkhole, I thought we had that. It's done. It's done. done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. You can we take that. We went through um, the whole list of like changes. A, yeah. C. Yeah. Because they're in the bond. Yeah. Um, 2C, AB, 2A, AB. Yeah, AB, those are getting done. Those were done? Yeah. And did I miss anything from my notes? So ABC no. and yep. 2. Yeah, 2. Yep. So I would say, you know, for me, it's tell me the importance of the driveway. Because we're, we can put a skim coat on the driveway. We're gonna, in five years, we're going to be back to what we have right now. So right. it's going to mean a real, it's 180 that's there. So it, it's going to mean going down deep in that to, to drive Route 12 and <laughs> drive it every day, twice a day. And the places where it was tilled, they're, they're getting bad, but they've lasted a lot longer than the plate because they have a test. I don't know if you know this, but AO, Agency of Transportation has a test strips on Route 12 to see what's the best way to repair this stuff. Mm -hmm. The ones that are holding up the longest are the ones they went down yeah. into the subsurface. We're not real certain on that 180. No, we're not real either. certain. We thought that could even be higher, but I, I need to know. I get Chris when you ask me. That's my biggest question. Let's figure out that big Let's ticket. Figure there. out that and the level of importance because a lot of the small stuff with a price per, we can figure that out because that's going to tell us how much we need to save in the capital fund. Or if you said, hey, in the next five years, we want that that driveway taken care of. Okay, we go out. And kind of we say, okay, is it the 180, is it 250, whatever it is. And then we make a plan that we say, this is how much either we leave in there or we can spend so much and we'll replenish. Yeah. So that that's money management. That that uh, that we can figure out. I've got our wizard oh. right to my left here, so she'll figure that out. Well, when we were dis <laughs> discussing 
um, <laughs> going, to going to bond, <laughs> one of the things that had been discussed in those meetings were simply making sure that some of the small stuff got done so it didn't become big stuff. So to me, you can't just say, do you want to do the driveway or not? You can't lose track of some of the small stuff. And because that's a, I mean, the driveway is important, but you also don't want staff and community to think, well, you did the bond and now you're not going to take care of any of the other little stuff. You want them to see some continual so work. Until you experience. So, so, so it's, well, hold on. And so what I was trying to figure out is how many of these little things are things that that may not be so little that they need to rise up that we should be considering and does that mean we can't really go for the driveway at the moment yeah the kitchen's the, the unknown right the kitchen's the unknown I mean to the rest of it um, you know we're East Montpelier five years we're out five years from that being done there's some little things like Todd says I got to get to some painting there's some repaint it's just the use of the building Anything else? No, not. And they did a lot of mechanical, same as you did. They did a lot of other stuff too, but they did a lot of mechanical. You, the floors. I think you're going to, from talking about a lot of uh, life expectancy of systems and flooring and all that. Grant, I'm trying to answer your. I think you're. You know, we're going to start seeing maintenance costs eight, ten years. You know, as Lori said, there's some maintenance money in our budget, and we can start to use some of that. I, you're right. I agree with you, Corinne, it's that you got you don't want to lose track of it and just let it be because that's where it got us into the hole in which way. Right, which is why we're having the conversation that we are as far as looking at the whole list. So I think we all recognize that paving the driveway is important. Yeah. But that does take the majority of the money that uh, would be available. And, that, and that's why I was asking you of your right. importance of that. And I'd like your feedback on that. That's kind of what we're trying to do. Yep. Thank you. Are, are we still in a position to talk with Kohler and Willis or with Blackwood Design for a better... Um, for, for a price, right? And they'll, they'll come and look at it. Yeah. And there are still, I would and think that they're still, still fairly fresh in their minds what's going on with the kitchen, what's going on with the driveway. Yeah, I mean, the kitchen, what we were worried about was some of that grease area. I was not saying, could Black River come up with better pricing? And we're going to pay them. To do that. We're to pay them to do it. They will. Right. And they are busy. I know they're busy with what well, they're doing right code, now. It's code. It's code, right? Yeah. You don't want to. Well, if it's code issues, when it comes up, it'll be up. That'll be it. Well, mm -hmm. some of it's grandfather too, and, and so the kitchen's a little different than some of the other building wow. parts of the building with mm -hmm. code. Uh, the kitchen we have health inspections, so they tend to turn over right. faster and be like what you're just saying, Peter. It's if we come in and get a kitchen inspection, they say do it. It's you don't. Say, can we do that a couple years? They're like, no, we do that right now. That's, that's why it would be good to have a, a, a harder number for the kitchen work. We can get that. So that we can realistically yeah. prioritize that, okay. include that. We can get that. Is there anything outside of this capital discussion I can do for you tonight? I, you're the second board that I've seen. No, I don't think so. Um, I think it, kind of in our minds, the big issues and Pete and Corinne, correct me if I'm wrong, it's the driveway, it's the ADA access to the secondary entrances, it's the code items in the kitchen, and it's getting some painting done. There are a lot of other things that are smaller things on here, but are obviously also important, but those are the four that jump out to me. I would agree with yep. that. Yep. that. That helps a lot just have, knowing that. I, for me, Chris, I don't okay. know about you, I'm going to keep on you know, keeping through the construction. Was. Yep. No, that's that's great. Then maybe we'll just identify those four as the things we want to gather more information on, get a firmer price on. But with numbers on those four items, we, we could prioritize the, the doability yeah, of, of painting, painting and things like yeah, that. Well, we can figure that out. And uh, knowing that bidding bidding right now is um, it's not that's time. John Hemmelgarn did get back to me and say he's seeing higher uh, bids than he has in yeah, a long time right now. Going up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right, we had something. This, the boilers were like. 25% over what yeah, you normally. Yep. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. If you need anything, Lori's going to take care of you guys. You oh, Lori's already yeah. taking good care Lori's of us. Lori's magic wand. <laughs> <laughs> the wizard. She's their wizard when it comes to money. I usually walk in and say, I need something out of nothing. <laughs> so, 
Maury, one more time, what was the what was the final capital fund balance that you were looking at? I was once looking we get at um, the, beyond this the year's June? 97, and then we have a budget of around 20, I think, next year, so that puts you at 117. Then if um, the project ends with between five and 30,000 from the roof, um, you know, from the final bond, well, that could put you at, just say, 122, and then, and then another 100 possible transfer from the school budget. So that puts you at 222, roughly. Best case would be like yep. 250. Okay? Yep, thank you. You're welcome. Definitely the number person. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, item 3.3 .3 is the overview on walkthroughs. Carol. So I put in the, I put screenshots in the package for you. I don't know. I mean, I can go, I can get it turned on. I can show it to you physically and how it, it works if you want it more in depth. So walkthroughs are done. This is <laughs> Walkthroughs are done um, frequently. Um, I do a, a, about four to five per um, individual, and then it doesn't seem to want to work. Can it? Can we reach up and hit some button? No, it's usually that's it. Do you know how to turn it on? Unless the batteries are dead. That's I'm going to say at home we reach up and push a button on ours. <laughs> but um, so if you are new to the school, the first year you have a more extensive, there is a, uh, a um, walkthrough uh, done, but then there is also a more extensive time where it's a full observation of a lesson that they have to show their planning, they have to show uh, what work they have done and um, how they uh, are trying to accomplish that work. Then I go in and I, uh, we meet ahead of time, we pre-meet. If you want to scooch a little bit, I'll try to show you all um, what I mean. And I apologize for you over there. So I'm going to use myself. So. This is what the teach point looks like. This is what I have all this, the, the teachers here. We don't use, do it with the paras. Um, teachers then can look and see. I can pull up any one of these walkthroughs. And what I showed you in the screenshots is this walkthrough right here. So I go in. I can start the timing. I can share this document with myself. I can select the area that I am, math, whatever. And this uh, document, even though it aligns with Danielson, it was created uh, mostly by Stephen uh, Dellinger Paint to also uh, correspond with what we are working on with the SLOs and transferable skills and mm -hmm. such. So some of the evidence that you see, you would not necessarily see in a Danielson type format. So for example, it, are there clear uh, learning tar targets available? I can look and see or hear them talking about it. I can hit yes. Then this area is where after I've observed for a while, see what the lesson is about, understand what's going on, mm -hmm. I might walk over to Lori and say, so what are you doing? And um, they might ask, you know, say, well, we're doing this. Well, why do you think you're doing it? Because the teacher thinks it's fun, you know, kind of <laughs> thing. If that is the case, student has a very unclear, <laughs> is very unclear about the learning target, and I can hit unsatisfactory. Then for each one of these, I can go through and mm -hmm. I can uh, grab some evidence for that. What I tend to do is um, just type it all out as fast as I can. And then I go back through and I try to hit the evidence. So that is one walkthrough form that you can use. 
Carol, could I ask a question? When you say sure. type it all out, do you mean things that you're hearing or your interpretations yes. of what you're hearing? What I am Just hearing. Just actually what you're hearing. Okay. Yeah, so um, there is also a walkthrough uh, with, where is the one? Um, since this isn't being screened, and if I can um, just pull one up here, and please don't use any names. <laughs> but so, for example, uh, here, when I was in there, I started typing as quickly as I could. I started typing everything that was said. It shows minute by minute what is being said so that the teacher can then reflect back on and I can, from when meeting for them, say, you, you wanted to give time for students to work together. But if you look, you only gave two minutes. How much can they accomplish in that two minutes? So you might want to have more time there. In this time, you asked, like, five questions. But how depth, in depth are those questions? Are they really pulling out information that you want? So when you're saying what it's doing, I am typing as quickly as I can so that I can see, you know, students started right away to, uh, and with excitement. So yeah. why are you doing this? Be so is so. the stuff the teacher is saying or the students or both? I'm teacher, teacher, it's teacher, teacher. Saying. And if I put T and then S and then T and then S and it goes back and forth. So we can do, you can look oh, at that. Okay. Yeah. This can also um, do it for, uh, let me pull up uh, another one, like um, this teacher here, and we won't use any names. Um, and if I had just like, let's see, pull, pull this one up. If this is one, you can see T and then S and then T and the student. And I try oh, to go yeah. back and forth, and okay. here's the questioning. If we need tape or string, yes, you only get what you have in the bucket. Can we trade? No, only what you have in the bucket. But how do we get your stick, show transition, you know, and that. Mm -hmm. So um, here is a lot of back and forth, and here are some students talking to each other. So that's a very strong uh, showing that uh, students are really uh, working together. Guys, what if we need to move the dinosaur using the noodles? Do we have set boundaries first? Try the Nerf ball, you know, that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. you can really clearly go through. I saw that there were learning targets. And so I went through and I started to... Um, I didn't get a chance to ask a question, but then I went through, and with that, I scored. We scored. We talked about it, communicating with students. Um, and I sat down with him, and we worked on different areas. And so you do this um, observation on any given day, and then how, how long before you go back and you both go through this together and, and talk about uh, it? We can go on. through it together, or I send it. They know that they have it. We can write back and forth. It might not okay. necessarily be a physical meeting. Okay. I would meet with this individual uh, more because they're still in that first two-year yep. um, time. Okay. Um, and then so we close that. Um, with him, he has um, an observation. I do twice a year a full observation. He fills out a pre-observation form. He shows uh, what the lesson is going to be about, what I am going to see, what I am going to look at. We meet for this. We discuss this. So when I go in, I know. And then again, I can go through. And he yeah. evaluates You know that then I can also go through and, and look at any of the lessons. Um, and so you just show up, or is it a planned time? There are planned times for student te excuse me, students, I'm sorry, for teachers who are in the first two years. Ah. There are planned. The other ones I just walk through, unless, for example, so this is a, another one with the script, back and forth, back and forth. I have had teachers say to me, you know, I'm trying this new lesson, or is this is something connected to a strong goal that I have this year. Mm -hmm. Could you come in and do a walkthrough and just watch for this? Nice. And we've done, I've done that. Um, yep. So that is um, how it looks for 
the teachers. They don't have all of this. Then you can go through and there are a whole bunch of reports. You can take a look at uh, any um, reports. You can look at detailed reports. Um, it's really great. I've used this to, um, we as an admin team, filter all of this into because we can look at all authors, we can pull it up, and we can say in domain three, um, student um, engagement is, and we did that, it is lower and it needs help. And then we look at individual annual um, uh, summaries of people reflecting and it's showing <clears throat> that student engagement is an area that's why we created modules then to help the, to, with student engagement. When you see the learning targets, um, we were seeing that based on this data, we were not seeing enough of those learning targets. So we felt that we needed to put it right in. Those learning targets were new this year because last year, we just we weren't seeing any place to document it in the first place and then second we were talking about we weren't seeing it being used effectively so this actual these documents are fluid as well based on what we're seeing we can then create like this year Stephen and I was part of that team sat down and said you know we just don't think we're hitting you know this area strong enough let's put it into a new document and the scripting is new too and that is really phenomenal I love that part of it so they can you know as fast as I can type which sometimes you know kids are talking really fast but I can put it in and they can see it one right after another mm. we use this data in our admin team um, uh, Stephen Dellinger Pate is the guru of this, so he is teaching us more and more to work with it. And every time we see something that we're like, you know, we're not getting enough information in this area, he said, well, let me add it to one of the documents. Hmm. We want it to be streamlined enough so it's not, um, you know, oh gosh, the teachers are like overwhelmed and they've got to read all this stuff so that it's easy. You can see it's easy, it's quick, you can move it through, but it's um, giving them information. And they reflect, they can reflect back and forth. We could either meet in person or it can be back and forth through the mm -hmm. document that we can, and once we both feel comfortable, we sign off on it. Once it's signed, it can't be changed. So I tell them. Is that the formal evaluation or is that? tie into like the a formal purple. evaluations are done in here as they well. are done in there as well and once they're signed and then of course right now all of the teachers are working on um so for example uh jane uh this individual just told me that they've done their end of the year summary we haven't checked off on it yet she's done it i've i'm reading it i'm going to reflect on it it's really great because, so for example, um, this individual just told me she just completed hers. She's setting up a meeting. We do meet together at the end to go over their uh, annual goals, their summary, end of the year summary, yeah. setting goals for next year, reflecting. This is really a neat thing. So she is reflecting on some of the... In, she can add it so I can actually see uh, what a great tool. yeah so she can show me and add to document and specifically give evidence mm -hmm. uh, so if you're not in that room and she's talking about something that is connected to that domain that specifically like student engagement or student self-assessment or student working or classroom management she can show it to you and you can look at it right there. Uh, they can upload lessons, they can upload pictures. I've had people upload uh, work or letters that they've gotten from parents and things and it's all there. And then it just collects year after year. So next mm. year um, when Aaron is looking through this and he is wondering, you know, so Am I seeing what Carol saw, you know, last year, da, da, da. He could go up and he could um, 
Wait a minute. He could change it so that he could put a different year. That's, he could yeah. grab it. Right. Yeah, that's great. Could transfer that knowledge yeah. that way as well. Yeah. Besides you going through and doing walkthroughs, are teachers, not necessarily on there, but are teachers able to visit each other's classrooms as far as learning from each other, like if they, if they are doing a new um, yeah. program or, you know, went to a conference and, you know, are trying out stuff, are they able to share also? I've opened it up to allow people to do that. Not many people have taken advantage of it. And it's a re Corinne, I think that is excellent. They don't take advantage of it. But it's only so many hours in the day. I do yes, understand that. <laughs> through uh, work that they've been doing with Ellen, our math coach, mm -hmm. uh, she has set that up. But it's hard. You have to get subs for I different individuals. She has people who do a lesson, and what she does then afterwards, like a team will come in, like three or four teachers from different schools in that area, like fourth grade mm -hmm. teachers teaching math, and a teacher teaches a lesson, which is you know, really going out on a limb because you're teaching in front of people and, you know, you make mistakes and everybody sees it. But then um, Ellen brings them back and they all reflect, they talk, they work together and they learn from it. And I think that's the biggest thing they learn from it. It's not, you know, oh my gosh, Laura, you really blew that or something like that. It's so this is what we're doing. What what could we strengthen? What would we pull from this? That the teachers have been saying are, are is very very beneficial. So, thank you, Carol. All right. One of the leaders. She didn't give herself credit, but I've been watching. They've been using this software for what, three years? Mm -hmm. But you came with some experience. I, I, I have used it at another. It's good. It seems like it's just going to get better and better. And as you build that database, it's like an important evolution of any mm -hmm. educator's career will be right there. Oh, exactly. And it's, it's a wonderful uh, piece of seeing how they grow in yeah. their work. Too. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I want to do our best to get out of here at 9 o'clock. So this is that's a challenge uh, for all of us. We have item 3.4, local meetings versus supervisory meetings. And I, I think this was something that Corinne was really interested in. Um, and we had a few brief discussions about it. I, I'll try to summarize those discussions, which were would be loved. We'd love to have more time um, to do. Uh, maybe have some demonstrations from students or teachers, more time to do some of the fun stuff and not just <laughs> the day-to-day -day stuff uh, at our board meetings. And then we had uh, your superintendent pushing in, and maybe your principal a little bit, pushing back on that a little bit, saying, um, you know, we have meetings, we should make time in our regular meetings, maybe have a little bit longer regular meetings rather than an additional night when the, they are stretched very thin and uh, might not have the bandwidth for additional meetings. I think the other thing you were talking about, Corinne, is having something locally and in Berlin where people might be more likely to come out in Berlin rather than um, come up to U32. And it is an earlier meeting, too. And it's an it earlier, earlier meeting, too. And so I'd like for us to kind of make a decision once and for all whether we really do want to try to squeeze in some additional meetings or... Um, just say let's let's stick to what we've got and do our best to fit it into our existing meetings. Yes, I, I made the comment last time. In the four years I've been here, I think one of the number one reasons that I've heard for board members to have to step away, and it's really sad because the board team, you know, they get so much momentum, is the number of meetings. Because not only do you have the school board meetings, you have to volunteer for negotiation, uh, executive policies at 46. It's a lot of meetings. There are, are Welcome, Pete. Meetings. <laughs> well, I think, I think that's been an age old as far as the number of meetings, but yet in the past we've been fortunate enough to have Peter, people like Peter and Mike and Linda and Amy Brewer, and I mean, the list goes on, who really stayed with the school board for many years. Yep. So there might be some people that have gotten on that didn't realize that's the type of commitment um, that happens. But I, I don't think we've had a bunch of turnover in recent years, which has not been standard over the years. It doesn't sound like it's typical. Yeah. Um, 
That and I think the only other thing that you didn't mention, Chris, is that there usually are at least a couple of occasions, I think, during the year when we want to end up having some kind of more of like a public hearing or something on a particular matter, whether it's the budget or something else. It might end up being Act 46 or something this yep. time around, where if that could actually be set you know, during a standard time rather than it being an odd time or something added in, yep. that wouldn't be bad. Okay. Any thoughts on that, Peter? I think if when you can incorporate special presentations into a regular meeting, it is, I think it's good for everyone. Um, as you said, Chris, meetings may be a little longer if, you, if you're having a, I don't know, we're we talking about like a primary unit presentation? Yeah, yeah, a student presentation or maybe a teacher presentation yeah, on something they're, they're proud of, yeah. Um, um, rather than, than additional meetings, scheduling additional meetings. And I have to say, um, having spent eight years at Berlin on the board before, mm. I, I do think that some of the committee commitments now sound like they're more time-consuming than perhaps they were 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, it, 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 my perception at the moment is that that's the case anyway. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Stephen, sure. I'm just here waiting for. Yeah, absolutely. We'll recognize <laughs> Stephen Look, who's uh, waiting for our audio visual uh, to wrap up. Um, we're we're doing that a lot in the East Montpelier board now, and and doing the what? way we um, incorporate stuff into our regular local board meetings, mm -hmm. and we do it by adjusting the time, like you were talking about. So, as an example, we had a presentation by students, so. Typically, we start our board meetings at 5.30. We started our board meeting later so that the students didn't have to be there as long. Or if we want community, uh, I don't know, budget stuff, we'll start our meeting at 5.30, but then we'll maybe take, we'll stop our meeting at 6.30. I'm making times up because that's a better time for the community to come. And we'll dedicate an hour for budget presentation, then at 7.30 we'll go back to the regular yeah. board stuff. So that's yeah. how we've addressed it. We'll wait for the meeting and even play with when we do certain things in the meeting or might break up our meeting to try to... And we find what it does, it also gets more people to our meetings because they'll come for some other reason and then they're there anyway. So they'll it might actually stay. Sorry, no, thank you. That's that's helpful, and that's I think that's the approach that that I would prefer. And it sounds like um, Peter might agree with that. Corinne, are you? Would you be okay with uh, attempting some maybe creative scheduling to work some of those things into our meetings? Yeah, I think the more that um, can be figured out in advance, the better. As far as people being given the heads up if we're doing something yeah. special. Yeah. I mean, I think sometimes when you let people know just, you know, a week or two, you know. Part of that I is mean, getting the word out. Agendas come yeah. out usually within the week of the meeting. Right. Where that's kind of hard to plan if you are doing something in particular yeah. that the community might be interested in. Right. Right. That's a good point. All right. 4.0 is reports to the board. Um, we had our finance report. Lori, do you have anything to, or Carol for administration? Any questions on? I don't think so. Anybody? Um, no, I don't think so. Quite a silver here. Somewhere it's over here. Um, no. All right. Thank you for that report, Carol. 
from the packet. Our action agenda 5.0. 5.1 is to approve blanket authorization for check orders for FY 18 and 19, and that's uh, tied to page six of our packet. Lori, is there anything you want to tell us? Yes, I gave them over. Yep. We so. do have the hard copy, and if you could explain that to us one more time. Um, as Bill mentioned, that's um, so that when you don't have board meetings, that it goes to be paid on a regular schedule. You set up the schedule for the whole year. So that people know if it's always the second Monday of the month, the checks will be issued, and for some reason you cannot meet, say, in July or August. Um, that's we would release the checks and we would approve the board order after that. I guess my only question was it had sounded like it was all about the summer, but yet that isn't how it's written. It's just written kind of in general. It will remain in effect until further notice from the board. So I just. You it once a year. Our auditor helped with that. Um, it's just something that's a technicality that they have to do certain wording. So if we decided not to meet in August or something, right. so it would just or stay in the Or if it was a snow day and um, we couldn't have a meeting, you know, in the winter, it's happened okay. before. Yeah. Those yeah. checks would go out, and then the next month you would get, you know, if you didn't. So it really meeting. is in effect for the school year for the school unless year. we say otherwise. True. Okay. And it gives the treasurer that kind of a uh, safety net so that they yeah. can sign checks. Okay. And so the real one is where? Right here. Do we need a motion on that, or do we just need to yeah, sign off um, on it? A motion, a motion. Yeah, to approve it, and then you just sign that so that the, tre the treasurer gets a copy okay. of the signatures. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the 2018-19 blanket authorization to have checks, how do I say it, checks okay. signed, approved, whatever the right wording is, mm -hmm. um, when the board is not able to meet in a month. Does that... I guess Something you would just like reference that. the document, the document that you're going to sign. It has a lot more words on it than that. Um, it's not like this has a title, though. <laughs> that effective right. immediately. Well, I, guess, I was just thinking you would just approve the blanket authorization for check orders for FY 18 19 as outlined okay. in the document. There we go. Do you have that captured somehow for the minutes? Good. I made that motion. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'll second. Thank you. And any further discussion? Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. We've done that. I'm going to do uh, 5.2 before I pass this to you because that's also inside the folder. Okay. 5.2 is to uh, award revenue anticipation note. And that's also on page 7. Oh, that's the. Um, and Lori, can you give us a, in a nutshell? Um, the words you made for the motion? Yeah, please. I wrote it right there. Um, to award revenue anticipation note. Oh, you did. Bid to Community Bank NA for the time period of July 2nd, 2018 through June 28th, 2019. And the um, amount of the loan for Berlin School is one million. Um, sorry, you don't have a copy? Um, $1,484,588 at the rate of 2.7%. Okay. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> and is there a second? There is. Any discussion? Those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. I do have one question that I didn't need an answer to have this done, but... Um, in the lower of the two sections there, where it says overall spread combined bid. Yes. Can you explain that line to me? Sure. Um, you are borrowing money at 2.7%, and the investment rate is 3.71. So that's where you would generate 1% profit. I oh, I see. Is the way we were discussing that? Okay. Okay? Yep. Thank so you. So the second motion is written right there as well. And that's the investment bid? Mm -hmm. To award the investment bid to Community Bank NA for the time period of July 1st, 2018 through June 30, 2019 for the following interest rates, and I would say 3.71% for the investment rate yield. All right, is there a motion to that? 
Yep, and a second. And any further discussion? Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And then the last on our action item list is regarding the technology fund. And that's to approve reserving $16,370 for technology. It was a previous reserve, Laura, you mentioned earlier. Of $6,400. Does, does that mean that we don't need to do, reserve this much, or? We, we need wanna, both. We need both, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, uh, so move. Okay. Corinne, is there a second? Yeah. And any further discussion? Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Did, did I just mess this up? Were you, wasn't it you that handed these, no, Carol had handed these forms. When you said that I needed to also send them to clerk, wasn't that actually supposed to be Rosemary that signed it there? Um, okay. No, Which some clerk? are board clerks and some are um, town clerks. So we check it with the bank. So if it has your name. It didn't. It said clerk, but Carol, you had said that I needed to sign it there. But so I'm just wondering, can my signature be in both places or? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Kristen said that. You're signing as okay. a board member and as the board clerk. Yes. Okay. All right. You. Okay. And the treasurer is Diane. Right. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. And then once those are signed, I take those back. Okay. Save Carol. Um. Oh wait, you said second. Right. Sorry. No, we were done with that. We're, we're fine. That? Yep, the the we're on to item 6.0 unless you have other Hold comments, questions. 6.0 6 is approving the board orders, which Pete now has. We each. I have a question. Okay. Because I'm probably not up to speed, but there's an item on here for um, yeah. uh, Vermont Correctional Industries. Oh, is that some of the furniture? Double bookcase, cubby, and table. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So that's not the project, the construction project. That's something else. There was money set aside for the items for the library out of the regular budget that actually went in. They, we weren't sure how it was going to be paid, so we set it aside just to make sure that the library, because it's a focal point of the school, mm -hmm. had what it needed. Mm -hmm. That when all of the dust settled, we realized that that section had actually gone through the budget, or through the bond. So we still had that funding set aside. So Lori said if there's anything else for the library, so, and those items were made through the correctional. So I went to uh, Amy and said, is there anything else? And she said, yes, as a matter of fact, we need book more bookshelves because we're moving some books out of the intervention space because that has to be used as a classroom next year. So we needed more bookshelves for that and a couple other things. So that's what that is. And it's all made through the correctional. Yes, I, I, I'm familiar with that. That's yeah. what caught my eye. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Do you need any more time with that, Peter? Uh, no, I'm uh, need some signatures here. So she's right on it and said they make a motion. On the board orders. The board orders, that's right. So now <laughs> Good job. I would entertain a motion to approve the board orders. And if you could say in the amount of. Um, Peter, you want to make it then since you have it in front of you? In the amount of. I think you have two one for construction. One, right? right, there's two. There's one for construction and one for. Um, it's not on the summary sheet on the top. Go back the to the top. Of, might be on the first oh, page. I think go back to the very top. Yeah, those numbers are really what I'm looking at. Okay. okay. For, uh, for the board <coughs> orders for construction of $29,425.14, you know what? That's backwards. That's backwards. The warrant is twenty nine four twenty five fourteen, and construction is $1,242.50. All right. Can, I'm sorry, can you say that figure one more time? One hundred forty two. One thousand two forty two fifty. Thank you. Okay, is there a second? Second. And any further discussion? Those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 And future agenda items. Well, can I can I ask a question? Sure. Bring up something. I yep. I didn't think of this when we were asking about additions and it could be saved for no okay. for another meeting potentially, but I 
I'm wondering as far as we've had conversations before about um, website work that we'd like to see more done, and I know everybody's time is stretched. And so I guess my question is, do we have monies available? Could we, could we be hiring anybody else to do some of the work? Can we put that on a future agenda item and yeah. let Bill speak to that? Yeah. I just think I, I, good, I just don't question. feel like we've, we've resolved it in any way. I mean, we all know how busy everybody is, but yet it's something that I think we've all agreed that we'd like yeah. to see um, more work done with. And to me, it's part of the community outreach. I was going to say that, way that we might see that come up in the community engagement yeah, it, discussion. It's just a way that... We tell people, well, you can find it on on the website and all, and so to have that be a priority, I think, yeah. is important. Yeah, good, good question. Um, any, I know we have uh, board goals set for our next agenda because we tabled that tonight. Mm -hmm. Anything else for a future agenda item? Did we have any other old things still? It seems like we might have. We might have worked through most of them. Ooh, yeah. School safety is also on there, yep, to get a uh, some information about that. If anything comes up, we're not going to have another board meeting until August, um, Berlin board meeting until August, so if anything comes up in between, please feel free to let me know, let uh, Bill know. Don't let, let Carol Aaron. know. <laughs> let Aaron know. And uh, we have our school picnic coming yes. up yes. next week. Yes, yeah. they always put on a great school picnic. Say Tuesday? I don't know. Wednesday, yeah. Wednesday, 13th? Wednesday. Thursday, I believe. Um, oh, I shut myself down. Yep. Great. Tuesday is school dance. Uh, 19th is graduation. We hope you all come. What time is graduation? Starting at 6. Six. Great. And we'll be giving out diplomas. Oh, I guess I will. Yes, you will. I've never done that before. That's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right. If there's nothing else, oh, there, oh, there is one, there is one thing. other thing. Um, the school tar start time committee. Are we haven't right. voted on having a? Member. We haven't. Good. Good. Uh, good catch. I'm going to ask if either of you would be interested in doing that. If not, I'm it. School start time committee because yeah, Carl Parton was the. Uh, was the primary and I am the alternative. I'm now listed as the primary there, although I haven't attended one of those meetings yet. I haven't been able to, but um, is that anything either of you has a burning desire to? I, I, I appreciate so you so much that, already. Uh, that Peter be the one appointed to <laughs> okay. the school talk, start time committee. And how will I be informed or in the loop so that it sounds like a meeting over the summer? Yes. It, it sounds like it. it was, there was some question about whether they would be doing any work over the summer, but it sounds like from our discussion today that they they will. Um, Krista, I'll let Krista know that I'm off and, and you're on it. I'm, yes. I would still be the alternative, so if you couldn't make uh, a meeting, just let me know. Um, but I'll let Krista know to start sending all that to you. And if you look at the WCSU website, they've done a really great job of getting all the materials up there that they've been working with. I think we need to have that be an official motion, though. Yes. And so I made that motion. To I'll second it. it. There we go. And all those in favor say aye. Aye. <laughs> aye. I've gone to a couple. They really are quite interesting. Congratulations. The topic has been around for a while. Yeah. Um, and I think the data is... We will adjourn at 9.07. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Mr. Look, Peter, both of you. To review for you.